I just want to say a very quick thank you so much to everybody for joining us. Uh, the St. Vasilios Philoptochos created this wonderful event and generously invited us to host it. Uh, my name is Ari. I am one of your hosts, and many of you may know my co-host, and I'd like to introduce Foti Stamos. Hello, Foti. Yeah, so Ari, Hello. as Ari has mentioned, uh, we want to personally thank the uh, St. Vasilios Philoptochos for actually reaching out to us. And I want to say a special thank you to Evelyn, Elaine, and Chrissy, who contacted me about uh, taking us up on an offer of uh, providing virtual wine experiences for various different occasions. And uh, we went back and forth a couple of times. Uh, I think Evelyn and Elaine and Chrissy had a lot of questions. We hammered out the questions. How was this going to work out? And here we are. Uh, we put together a nice package for everybody. We're going to do a tour of Greece. We picked three different regions that make amazing wines that we're going to talk to one of our hosts coming up soon about the different uh, areas and the different wines. But for us, for me as well, as a member of St. Vasilios, um, it's an honor to be hosting this. And I hope we do many more in the future. But before we get into the introduction of tonight, uh, tonight's event, I wanted to invite Evelyn to say a few words before we get going. Evelyn? Thank you. Thank you, Foti. Um, welcome, Father Chris, and Feliz Vida de Claire, Father Yanni, and Feliz Vida de Marina, and guests from as far as Seattle, uh, Chicago, Dayton, Ohio, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C., and I hope I didn't miss anyone. Connecticut. Connecticut. Thank you. <laughs> um, we're really excited about having this wine webinar um, hosted by Foti and Johnny and Ari, who is behind the scenes. And, um, you know, maybe we'll make this an annual event. Maybe we'll be in person and Zoom for people who can't make it. Absolutely. I want to give a really special thank you to Elaine and to Chrissy. And, you know, for, you, you, you mentioned me, Fati, but I really had nothing to do this. It really was all Elaine and Chrissy. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for doing all this to everyone. And thank you all for being here. Thank you so much, Evelyn. Thank, thank you, you, thank you. And before uh, we get going, if are you want to mention a couple of housekeeping uh, elements of, we can ask questions through the chat. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. If anybody has any question, which we encourage, we, we love questions. Johnny loves questions. Uh, use the chat. Um, but uh, towards the end, we're going to open up the microphones as well so people could get a little bit more of a, a, a real FaceTime kind of uh, feel and a social, uh, you know, how social hours are. So we'll have the video, we'll have the, the microphones open. But before that point, if you have questions, please use the chat and we will monitor that chat and, and get your questions answered. So thank Excellent. you. Excellent. And in, the, um, in your packages, we put uh, some instructions in the email about the wines. There were some instructions. So hopefully your white and your rosé are chilled and hopefully you open your red in advance. So we're gonna be exploring three different regions, but before I talk about that, let us introduce not just our host, but a very special friend of ours who's been helping us facilitate these wonderful wine experiences virtually. He's the gentleman that represents the wines that we're gonna to discuss today. Um, Johnny Levanos of the Diamond Wine Importing Company. Thank you so much for doing this. Welcome to the program. It is my pleasure. As always, to be with you, Ari and Foti, and this wonderful group of Philopticos, thank you for inviting us. And I hope you uh, are going to learn some things from me, and hopefully you enjoy these wines, and you can continue to drink and support uh, Greek wine. Just a little bit, right now, I'm in my family's restaurant, actually. I'm in New York City. We have uh, our beautiful bar here. So I'm, like, I'm the only one at the bar, because we're not allowed to sit at bars in New York City yet. So I'm pretending like we're at a wine bar and talking about <laughs> Greek wine together. Uh, so man, my family has been in the Greek, in the restaurant business for many years. Uh, with Molivos restaurant, uh, New York City is almost 30 years old in Midtown, Oceana. And I am at Lucia today, which is actually the restaurant I opened up four years ago. I'm focusing on Greek food, Greek wine. Uh, so one of my passions is definitely all things Greek and Greek wine. And uh, so it's always, I'm always love talking about it and, and sharing my uh, my passion with other people. 
So, uh, so for the first, so basically today's going to be like a Greek wine 101 while focusing on these three wines and regions. I want to go ahead and share my screen. So I'll, we'll have a little presentation I made and feel free to, again to type some questions in the chat box. I have that open so we could talk about uh, the wines as we go and, um, and ask any questions you may have. So go. can everyone see my screen? Yep. All right, time for Greece. Uh, Always go to Greece this summer, right? I, I, I'm actually looking to book my tickets right now to potentially go in, in August. So hopefully, hopefully things allow, things stay in the, on the path that they're going and we can open back up. Uh, so Greece, here, here's our beautiful country, our beautiful motherland. Uh, it is such a diverse country. And I'm talking with Greeks today, so I could be a little more, we get into it a little bit more. Sometimes when we do these, we're talking with people who don't know anything about Greece. And it's all about the... Uh, you know, everyone just thinks of the islands of Greece, right? Greece has hundreds of islands, 300 inhabited, but there's, I think, 1,200 islands, all including the uninhabited islands in Greece. So it's a very diverse country, but it's also extremely mountainous. Uh, so if you look throughout, if you follow my cursor, you know, all the way in the northern parts of Greece, of Macedonia, Thrace, uh, Drama, uh, are very mountainous regions, even as you go down to the Peloponnesus here. And the first wine we have is going to be coming from Mantinea, which is a very mountainous region. Uh, and the high altitude areas like this do create some really fantastic, unique style wines. So um, I'm just going to go, we're going to do like a Greek wine overview before we dive into wine number one. So I always like to mention this, you know, how Greek wine is not just an obscure category. But since we're talking to Greeks, I should say Greek wine is not just Retsina. <laughs> True. <laughs> There, there are over, there are hundreds of different grape uh, varietals of, of grape varietals from Greece, dozens of different styles, hundreds of regions that produce wine, and over 1,500 wineries in Greece. Uh, it's also one of the top destinations for tourists to go when they're visiting Greece, uh, Americans to go to visit. So they like to now we're finding more people are wanting to explore that, um, that what wines that they discovered in Greece and try to bring them back. Uh, and Diamond Wines has one of the most awarded uh, portfolios. Um, you kind of skip through this stuff. Anyway, it's worth noting there are hundreds of varietals. So for white wine, some of the main varietals we like to talk about are Asirtiko, which is from the island of Santorini, Malagusia, which is from the northern parts of Greece, uh, Rabola, which comes from the island of Kefalonia, uh, Vidiano from Crete, uh, but Mosco Filero. So Mosco Filero is the varietal that you have in your glass right now. It's the white wine we're tasting today. And that comes from, again, this region called Mantinia. So Mantinia is in the Peloponnesus. So we're, we're southern mainland Greece uh, near Nemea. And it's one of the regions that is closest to Athens, which makes it a very fun wine region if you're, actually, if you're planning to go visit wineries in Greece, which I highly recommend you do, uh, just because it's, it's due to its proximity. Uh, it's also so beautiful there. I mean, it's extremely mountainous. I'm going to skip ahead past Santorini. Uh, so the first wine we have is from Domain Scuda. Uh, so Scuda really works predominantly with two varietals. And these are the main two varietals of the Peloponnesus, uh, which is Mosco Filero and Ayoritico for a red wine. Uh, so in the Peloponnesus, is actually about 20,000 hectares under vine. So it's one of the largest wine regions in Greece. Uh, Nemea is dedicated just to red, but white wines is pretty popular here, and Mosco Filero is definitely the king of, of the Peloponnesus. Uh, so here we have a nice beautiful picture of Mantinea. Some fun facts. Uh, it's really about, it's really a, it's a valley, so the Mantinea is this mountainous valley, and the vineyards sit in between the valley at about uh, 2,000 feet of elevation. Um, now, what do we talk, why is elevation important? Why do we talk about elevation? Well, when wines are at a higher altitude, high elevation, they produce very uh, beautiful aromatics and they ripen very slowly. So if you've, if you've ever been to the Peloponnese in the summertime, you know it's extremely hot, right? It's very hot there in Southern Greece. But when you're up in the mountains, it actually remains cool all year long. Uh, so you have this beautiful, cool climate uh, that makes that allows the grapes to mature slowly and they develop little by little. So, you know, you're, you, what happens is you get this wonderful, mature, complex flavor profile, which is very uh, important with Mosco Filero. Um, beautiful sandy soils, which also gives that mineral minerality and texture. Uh, and here's the great Mosco Filero, highly aromatic. So 
if you're ever tasting this wine and everyone i have a glass if you ever have a glass this by now you know don't don't wait for me to start tasting i well, definitely I, want I you just, all to uh, johnny i just wanted to interrupt because somebody after my own heart which is mary rokas suggested which wine is first time to start sipping so thank yeah, you yeah so we'll let's do the white we're gonna do the white wine first and we'll go filetto uh so you know this is a grape that is highly aromatic so what, what does that mean? Well, it just means that it has so many flavors on the nose. When you're smelling this wine, you should be getting a lot of different senses of, you know, floral notes and fruity notes. So, man, give this wine a, a put your nose in the glass and give it a sniff. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll give some wine tasting little tips too. I always love to swirl my glass around. That allows all those aromas to really kind of start to rise up and it allows you to just get a lot more aromas and flavors, capture more scents. We're gonna give it a swirl and keep smelling it. I mean, so I have to the left of here on my screen, I have uh, the common descriptors. Uh, people like to call it a, a, a rose garden, a bouquet of roses, or uh, I like to think it has jasmine, honeysuckle note, uh, aromas on the nose. But it's such a very beautiful and, and, and charismatic grape with so much characteristics to it. And one thing that's interesting is for a white grape, it actually has pink purple skin. So if you see the picture, it looks almost like a purple grape, but it's uh, it produces white juice. So oh, sometimes wow. if you have a Mosco Filero, they might have a hint of pinkness on the on the color of the wine, which is definitely unique and interesting. You don't see that too often. I have some more pictures here of the Montaña Valley. I mean, it's it's so gorgeous. I love I love the environment of being up in the mountains. Uh, such great vineyards here. Oh, beautiful. So this is developed. This wine is from George Scura. So. Uh, Domaine Scoras is one of the uh, pioneering uh, wine producers in the region. Um, he's a, he started the winery in the 80s. And he was basically just making wine in his like in his garage. Now he and before him, people in Greece weren't making high, as high quality wines as they do today. Uh, so he's one of the pioneers that brought top quality Greek winemaking to Greece, and gets a lot of credit. So. Um, I have a little quick little video I can play because he does a much better job at describing Moscow Filetto than me. I love hearing him explain it. So I'm going to hit play here. Can you hear it or no? Uh, I don't think so. No. Okay. Hold on. Let me uh, make sure I share my sound. Uh, one moment. It was very interesting to see that what looked like a red grape was making white. Exactly. It's, it's so crazy how that happened. Yeah. Um, hmm. Share sound. This is my grape. I love that. There you go. Can you hear it now? Yep, yep. And what we were tasting last night. Okay. Mesco it is. Uh, it is my grape. I love that grape very much. It is uh, in the center of Peloponnese. I make wine uh, with uh, with the Moscow Filero the last 20 year, years. Uh, Moscow Filero, it is uh, a grape uh, variety in the, which we can find in the center of Peloponnese, in the plateau. Up and, and there is and for that because of that it's typical. Huh? Uh, at uh, about uh, 2,200 feet, and uh, up there it is a cold area of the Pyrenees. Imagine that uh, the harvest comes in October. That means uh, a lot. Uh, as this area it is, uh, it's a cold area. The uh, Moscow filler preserves the aromatics. By itself, the Grapes of Moscow Filero, they have uh, red skin, which is not exactly red because there are a lot of clones. So there is the Aspro Filero, white Filero, uh, which is a uh, green, more green. There is the Xantho Filero, which is the um, bl uh, blonde, blonde Filero. Which is another grape, another, it's like the Gewürztraminer. There is the Mavro Filero, which is the black Filero. So there is a lot of different grapes, uh, but uh, there is color on the skin. And the wine have not color. It's unbelievable. It's uh, like transparent. <laughs> but um, the wine, it is uh, always having such uh, of beautiful aromatics, basin. Uh, in, in flowers. 
the rose petals, the violet, the jasmine, um, you know, the uh, sweet citron, um, all these citrusy ar ar aromas come. So, so that basically is a nice description from, from Mr. Skouras himself. Um, so again, it's a, this 25 year old vine. So these, these vines are very mature. It's such a beautiful expression. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a moment so that we could you know open it up, see if people want to ask any questions, if anyone has any comments on the wine, um, so we could talk about it. What do you guys think? Arya, what do you think? Ah, uh, I've had <laughs> I, I've had this before, so uh, you know I, it's not my first time, but I'm gonna say it, and I always say it. it it's just such a refreshing. A, a, a very beautiful bouquet, refreshing. I, I'm not. I'm more of a red, but um, when I do white, it, this is this is. It's it's definitely. Um, I think for those of us that are huge into Sauvignon Blanc, right? Yeah, Sauvignon yeah, Blanc exactly. is, a, is a big category, and as you mentioned, refreshing, crisp, inviting, especially if the weather gets warm. But this is classic example of what. Greece has to offer in white wine production. It just suits the environment. It suits the occasion. It's easy to drink. As the weather hopefully gets warmer, you know, we had snow yesterday, believe it or not. <laughs> but uh, but uh, this is, I think, a great expression of a of, of very well-made white wine from that part of Greece. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's definitely fun. And, and I don't know if you heard George Skouras mentioned how he, this reminds him of Gewürz Terminer. It's another varietal that people oftentimes compare this to. Those are just really just two very aromatic grapes. You know, grapes mm -hmm. are just extremely characteristic, a tremendous amount of flavor. Um, and someone asked in the chat box, are these grapes grown on the side of the mountain or in the valley? So yes, it's in the valley, but like up, up the side of the mountains as well. So, you know, on the, there's, there's different levels. So there could be some that are on the valley floor and then other vineyards that grow up on the side of the mountain as well. Uh, so that, that, again, that high elevation keeps the grapes cold and helps them mature slowly. And as George, as George said in the video, they, these grapes are harvested in October. So in most other parts of Greece, they're harvesting the grapes in August or September. And that, that just shows that they, they mature quicker or slowly, right? So the earlier you harvest, that means they ripen faster. But as a grape matures slowly, you know, it's like they, as it's, they get more characteristic. It's, it's just, mm. I don't know. I, I mean, I don't understand how it's it just, you step by slow and steady wins the race, right? That's what they say. And I think it happen, it's true with grapes as well. Um, so something I like to, I like to mention. Uh, I have another question here. What are good cheeses to pair with Moscofilero? So white wines like this, which have very bright acidity, I think go really well with lots of different types of cheeses um, because it is such a character, high, a very aromatic wine with a lot of character. I maybe would pair it with softer cheeses, um, maybe some cheeses that are uh, like feta cheese or even manuri or graviera cheese would be great. Or like a brie, something like, I think a brie would be really nice if you had even like a, like a fruit, uh, like a, some kind of fruit jam or something like that to pair with, with the cheese would be nice. Um, I don't know if it's the best cheat wine for like really funky cheeses. Uh, I think more like simple, softer cheeses, like a goat yeah. cheese would be really nice. I agree. Like, oh, maybe not like Roquefort or blue cheese. I think mm -hmm. uh, you, it would, it would, the flavors would clash a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's what I, I, I think of those kind of cheeses would be nice. Other food and wine pairings with, with Mosco Filero. Uh, definitely, I love this with like, with seafood, like Kuro, I love, like with ceviche sushi mm. uh, this is a really good wine with spicy food so uh there's actually this there's this like thai restaurant near my house that has this wine by the bottle and it's like i always go for that because this with spicy food with like those asian flavors goes really well and any wines like this that are highly aromatic low in alcohol tend to pair well with spicy food so uh that's a kind of a little fun a fun pairing i'd like to try out Mm. That sounds good. And and please feel free for those of you that are having any type of cheese to give us your your thoughts in the chat box of what's going on. Cool. And Everyone like the wine? Any other thoughts, questions? Should we move on to wine number two? Hopefully, uh, I think uh, everybody who likes the wine say nothing. Anybody <laughs> who doesn't like it, say something, yeah. and we'll we'll, we'll see. 
but everyone uh, says that brie is definitely delicious with this wine. Awesome. I, I, I like, I'm, I'm making the restaurant now. So I'm like, I'm looking into the kitchen to see if anyone could read my mind and try to just bring me a <laughs> plate of cheese. You should, you should text the chef as yeah. we're <laughs> Chef Asiliki, you have any brie back there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, we, uh, I think Manuri cheese would be you really know what? good. Uh, we got an interesting comment from Kathy uh, who mentioned burrata or burrata from the uh, Italian totally. cheese. Yeah. Yeah, What's I think like cheeses like that, like creamy cheeses that are are pasty but like aren't over the top of right, like, funky yeah. flavor, or else they would they would they would clash. And those cheeses but with funky cheeses, I think they're I would pair them more with like a Chardonnay or for, in Greek wines again like a Sirtico, something that is uh, less yeah. car- less aromatic but still powerful enough to like cut the fat, cut mm-hmm. the, the, the the fat of the cheese. Uh, those are the kind of pairings I like to look for. Mm. Um, so the, the Dayton crew is uh, enjoying feta and kefalo gravieri, so that's that's good. Yeah, awesome. Excellent. Oh, okay. Excellent. You, guys, you guys got a nice dinner pa- dinner pairings already. Oh, good. and somebody's <laughs> enjoying it with octopus. That sounds really good. Oh. Yeah, I mean, any all Greek wines are meant to go with food. That's like a always something I like to mention. Is how in Greece, wine is food, right? Like wine isn't something that you just drink to get drunk right wine is something that is part of the land this part and it's part of the dinner table uh so you know all the wines that we import and all a lot of the greek wines that's what the inari work with uh they are really meant to be wines that go with food and how do, what what makes a wine go well with food one ha- is usually a, a brightness and acidity so they're all going to be dry wines um you know greece makes some really amazing dessert wines um Okay. But most of the wines that we work with and are all dry, like really bright acidity. And having good acidity in wine is important for food because it allows it, you know, the acidity washes your palate clean so that when you're going into that second bite, uh, you know, your, your palate is reset and ready to go and it, it makes the food taste better. And I almost like to think of it, like to make the analogy of imagine squeezing lemon on, you know, on a piece of like a uh, fresh fish, how that lemon juice brightens up all the flavors. Yes. Wine kind of works in the same way. It brightens up the flavors because it, it, it's resetting your palate and the acidity kind of excites your taste buds. So uh, Greek wine goes well with everything. <laughs> yes. yes, it does. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good tagline. I like it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, while everyone's finishing their, their, their first glass of wine uh, and having some bites, I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. Um, I have some other wines we could talk about before we get to wine number two. Um, so I'm sharing my screen. All right, so this is a Mosco Filero. Again, this is also available for sale, uh, Urban Wine Club and Deep Wine Club. So definitely rec- recommend checking it out there when you, when you need a refill. Uh, this is a <laughs> wine that's perfect for spring and summer. I mean, this is the kind of wine that it's low in alcohol. It's only 11.5% alcohol. So it's definitely, you know, it's something you could have a little bit more of. It's easy to drink. It's not like screaming tannins that, you know, it's, it's a, like a nice, easygoing wine. I think for spring, it's one of my favorites. Those aromas of white flowers just are perfect for spring. Mm. Um, so same producer also makes wines from Nemea, which is a neighboring region. Uh, so Nemea is dedicated 100% to Ayoritico, which is the grape of St. George. We're not tasting this wine today. I'm just going through this because I don't want to make you all rush to finish your first glass. <laughs> um, another high altitude wine growing region. Um, Ioritigo in Greek means St. George. So it's the great grape of St. George. And it's actually one of the most widely planted red varietal in Greece. Uh, we could be soft and very tannic uh, and often have these notes of red and dark fruit spice and carnation. Um, George Skouras, we, we have a fantastic barrel aging cellar there. So the wines are aged in barrels. Uh, we'll skip this. And yeah, so this is the St. George I read to go. Recommend checking out that. All right, so wine number two is gonna be the rosé. So if you want, you could pour yourself a glass of rosé or you could save it for later, whichever you prefer. Um, and so the rosé uh, we're drinking comes from Milonas Winery, which is from the Southern part of Attica. So Attica is the region of, that Athens is in. So this is actually the closest to Athens out of all the wineries we work with. Um, and they're a really fun producer. Uh, so it's, this is central Greece. Attica is, is considered central Greece in terms of winemaking. Most of the wine that they grow here is actually Sabatiano. So Sabatiano is a white wine, a white grape, 
and you probably have had this before because it's what they use to make Retsina. Uh, uh, so, yeah, Savatiano is the most widely planted white varietal in Greece. Um, and about 80% of all the vines in this area are dedicated to Savatiano. What makes this region special, though, is, you know, it has this calcareous, like, rocky soil, mountainous terrain, uh, proximity to Athens, as well as proximity to the ocean. Um, and Stamatis Milonas, he's a really fun producer because he, he gets a lot of credit for like showcasing high quality wines from this region where the region was mainly used to producing lots of bulk wines or Ritzina, maybe wines that weren't so, you know, maybe less, less effort into the winemaking because he's going to put some Ritzina in there to, to mask the flavors. <laughs> Stamatis Milonas, he, he doesn't do any, he, he's really focused on the quality. Um, so here we have uh, the, the Milonas Rosé. This is a blend of Mandilaria and Malagusia. So uh, Malagusia is a varietal that's native to Northern Greece. It's actually nearly extinct. I almost forgot about this wine. Oh. Uh, you know, in Greece, people were re ripping up their vineyards to plant international varietals. And like this is in the 60s and 70s, like Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc. And they kind of forgot about, they weren't paying attention as they needed to, to the varietal that made Greece special. Malagusia was one of them. So I love, I love this varietal. It's very unique, very aromatic again, a beautiful mouthfeel. And then Mandelaria is a red varietal from Crete. Uh, it's indigenous to Crete. He also grows this now in, in central Greece. So basically two varietals that are, are native to Greece. Uh, and when you blend them together, you get this really fun style rosé. So Malagusia is a white varietal. Mandelaria is a red varietal. When you blend them together, that's how you get that nice flush color. Yes. And if you're going to give this wine a smell on the nose, I've had my glass of rosé here. Oh, first of all, look at the color. I mean, it's this beautiful, like, salmon color. Mm -hmm. And the nose, I mean, it just jumps out of the glass. It's like floral, fruity flavors are really pronounced, um, which is really fun. But then you have this, like, this nice fruitiness that balances it out. Mm. So, um, Mati Milanasi is fifth generation winemaker. So, his challenge is making wine for, yeah, five generations. Uh, they were mainly farmers. And in 1917, they built their winery uh, to kind of produce their own wine. Wow. And we, we call this is an organic, uh, they do organic biodynamic farming with minimal intervention. So what that means is, um, you know, he lets the grapes do the talking. Uh, you know, people always talk about from farm to table. Well, I like to call this like from vine to bottle. You know, there is very little that happens between the grapes being picked and put into and, and fermented and made into a wine. And, and Johnny, that's that's huge nowadays. Like so many people are, are so into that and yeah. good reason. And, and they do that. Definitely. And it's important for the wines, I think, because, you know, you could do a winemaker are like chefs. Like they could do a lot of different things to make the wine taste a certain way, whether it's adding oak, using oak barrels, using different types of yeast letting it sit in the skins for a certain amount of time, you know, controlling the process of how the flavors develop. So when a winemaker is really skilled, it's like less is more. And if they could really, and they, if they're good winemakers, they're skilled at making wines that are clean, uh, like him, like Samathis, the, the wines taste so much better. You could taste, like you could taste the, the land. And, and you know, so all his grapes are hand-picked, um, on a stainless steel. Um, and you should get these like beautiful spring flower aromas with the red fruit quality as well hints of mineral hints of mineral minerality to it with a fresh crisp palette mm. any comments what do you what, do you, what does everyone think about this wine wine number two for for rosés this is one of my mm. favorites i love this one this rosé you know and rosé has been lately uh, a a category that's been slowly growing some people have been on the fence about rosé because unfortunately there's been a stigma about rosés being sweet but Rosé is actually a category that's been around for a long time. And if it wasn't for that funny wine that came around back in the 80s called White Ziffendil, it kind of ruined it for <laughs> rosés, right? So yeah, it's true. Now that White yeah, Ziffendil, I love White Zinfandel, right, uh, took a back that. seat, now <laughs> rosés are coming back again as far as, you know, the interest. Um, the productions of rosés are fantastic. And as you mentioned, too, Greece has been making rosés forever. It's not just something that's recent. Right. Yeah, Greece has definitely been making rosés for a long time. I think in the United States, rosés have become more popular due to Provence and wine from France. Mm -hmm. um, but Greek rosés 
to me, they're just so versatile. There's something you can drink all year round. They're not only spring, summer wines. You could have this in the winter and the fall. You know, it's, and I think rosé is what I find about rosé is if, if, if you have a table, if you're saying, okay, I have a table, if you have, I'm at a restaurant. If you are with a group of friends that you're kind of on the fence of what everyone's going to like, you know, rosé is, they have qualities of white wine and qualities of red wine. They have a little bit more body than, you know, your average um, uh, white wine, but they're still refreshing. You can just have them chilled. And, and I think our- as, as far as Greece goes, you know, these are the wines that you're going to have. At the, they're serving them at the hotels and the beaches and the beach bars. It's just such a fun, versatile, refreshing wine that, you know, you can't go wrong. Yes. Um, and one of, our, one of our comments uh, from Helen says she likes the spiciness of it. That's yeah. A- yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's totally there's like these herbal notes i feel like it's like spicy herbalness which i love yeah um which is definitely from the model Gucia kind of adds those sort of characteristics to this, to this and we, we have uh linda who's enjoying it with melizano salata dip and tiro uh Ooh, dip that's a perfect and pairing Marietta is enjoying it with hummus and crusty bread Ooh. elaine well, elaine is there some background noise i think that's because johnny's at the restaurant yeah, yeah, that's just my, that's just what so the it's just his, uh, yeah, <laughs> a lot of action over there. Um, yeah, uh, so. Melly's out of Salata, I think that's a great pairing for a wine like this. Um, because you have, you know, that the smokiness and the richness of the Melly's out of Salata with, with mm. like the, like the herbal fruitiness of this wine. It's a nice contrast in flavors. It's also a great wine for an introduction to any occasion, right? It's a great wine to kick off. Uh, to sip with whether you know during cocktail time or just you know sitting around and sipping it while having good conversation as well I think it has you know it's versatile said versatile it's great with food but it's also great for just sipping exactly yeah cool I think everyone I see everyone's drinking the wine I don't want to I don't want to rush people like to chug wine <laughs> <Help me here. laughs> Uh, but we, is this we have, is this? I have a question, Johnny, for yeah. our for our, our all of our guests. Can anyone tell us is this their first experience with a rosé in general? No, I see a lot of heads shaking, which is great. Because <laughs> believe about, it, how about Greek rosé. Greek rosé. How does it compare Greek rosé to other rosés we've had? I, I just seeing nod. Is it better, <laughs> Johnny? Johnny, excuse me. Yeah. Um, I I'm I'm a rosé fan, but it's a it takes a lot for me to like a rosé wine. And what I like about it is a combination of the acidity, balanced well with the fruit and other mm-hmm. flavors. And I think this one it reminds me of a quality Provence rosé. It's got the acidity that just makes your mouth water, makes you want to just keep drinking it. I love that in a rosé. Um, and I had never had a Greek rosé before. This is this is delightful. This is a great awesome. summertime on the back porch wine. I really enjoying this one a lot. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the comments. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think having a bright and brightness and acidity is important for most wines in general, but especially with a rosé, it's all about balance. And if it's if it's too sweet or too fruity, you don't have that balance with the acidity. It makes the wine taste flabby, or it makes it just you know less refreshing, uh, or less. It's a wine you don't really want to have as food. You almost want to put ice cubes in it and drink it like a cocktail. Um, But yeah, this is a fun rosé for sure. Um, Yeah, I I like that it has those fruity aromatic qualities to it, but then you have that acidity which balances it out and makes it just really approachable for lots of different types of cuisine. So, yeah. Oh, we have one comment from uh, Eleni. Uh, I know it's a no-no to use ice, but how long should you chill to keep it really cold? If you, I mean, I always just put the wines in the fridge and I take it out and that should be cold enough. I mean, if you, if the wine's coming from room temperature, what I like to do is I could, you put them in the freezer for 30 minutes and, you know, that usually does the trick. Um, I don't like putting ice cubes in my wine because, you know, it, it's the one thing, to, one thing to keep in mind is that winemakers in the winery, they do a really, have a really hard job to avoid getting water in the, in the wine because water just dilutes it. Like if, it, if it's about to rain and if it's going to rain and there's a, they're about to pick the grapes, it's like a, the worst nightmare because then the grapes absorb the water and they become less flavorful and less and less characteristic. Oh, so adding, adding ice, you know, again, everyone has their way to enjoy wine. If you add ice cubes to wine, you know, 
you're just going to drink it differently and it's, it's no, no, no shame, no harm, no foul. We just know that just, it's going to dilute it and you're going to lose a lot of the characteristics that, you know, a winemaker maybe worked so hard to, to, to make and produce. Um, but, it's, like, it's like putting yeah, uh, I, I, ketchup on your steak and the chef. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, no, no, yeah, no shame, no harm, no foul. Uh, and some, especially if it's like a summer day, I, I sometimes like it, just throwing it in there, especially the wine's not cold enough and you, know, you can't, there's nothing you can do to get it colder. Just throw some ice cubes in there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I always just try to make sure it's chilled. You know, I'd like to plan it out, like just have a bottle in the fridge the night before, so I don't have to worry about it uh, or, do the, or do the freezer trick. Also, if you're ever in a jam, if you have a bucket of ice, you can take the bottle and you spin it in the bottle. It makes it chill faster. Uh-huh. And another tip is if you add salt water salt. to the ice bucket, it, it lowers the freezing point and it actually allows the water to get colder than before. So what, you know, the water that's chilling your wine and ice bucket can't get colder than 32 degrees or whatever. So, so we're salt, getting, we're the water a, could get lower. We're uh-huh. getting a science lesson as well tonight. Yeah, that's, that's, those are the tricks. <laughs> salt water, salt in the ice bucket, spin the bottle, and you get it super cold, super fast. I love it. You got to twist the bottle. It makes it like a whole thing that's going on. This is a science project. <laughs> we're we're going to have you, we're gonna have you uh, uh, demonstrate that uh, in a future. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll be working the restaurant, and when someone complains the wine's not cold enough, I'll just I'll zoom you. I'll be like, hey, guys, so <laughs> this is what you do. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like, oh, I think that's a cool trick. Take a wet cloth, wrap it around the bottle, and it freeze for 15 minutes, and it'll chill quicker. That's true, because, like, as you have that coldness more touching the bottle, it, that's what makes it colder faster. So, I like that. All right, should we move to the red wine, Fossi? What do you think? Absolutely. All right. Uh, okay, so our final wine is the Dudu Fakis Vidiano from Crete. We're going to Crete now. So uh, let me get my screen. Okay, so Crete is here, the southernmost island in Greece, the largest island in Greece. Um, Crete is a very special place. I love it. I told you I'm booking, I want to book my trip to Greece this summer. Crete is like on my top of the list of places to see. My family actually comes from Lesbos. So every time I go to Greece, I always go to Lesbos. And this summer, I'm like, I want to go somewhere different. I've been locked at home a whole year. If I'm going to travel, I'm going to go someplace I haven't been. Do it, yeah. Actually, I have been to Crete, but it was for like only two nights. But Crete is a beautiful place with a tremendous amount of history. Uh, and the ancient Minoan civilization, they're the ones who brought winemaking to the rest of Greece and arguably the rest of Europe. And they were the main uh, group of people that kind of conquered and, 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 uh, ter- uh, and were inhabited Crete. Uh, so Crete is this again, beautiful, large, wide island. Most of the wines that we produce from Crete are, come from the center, right in the middle, right by this mountain here. And this region is called Daphne. Daphne. Uh, so there are five PDOs in Greece. Uh, PDO stands for protect, Protected Designation of Origin. And Crete, that's in Greece. I meant to say Crete. Citia, uh, Peza, Daphne, Arcanes, and Candia. Daphne is one of my favorites and one of the most important right now. Uh, and there are only 61 wineries in the island. Uh, and then both of them are in Arakleon, right in the center. So here's some pictures of the trip we took to Greece with, the, with uh, some winery, some, uh, some other wine industry folks. We were standing, this is basically an ancient, uh, ancient uh, foot um, grape, grape press where you would stomp the grapes with your feet. So there's, oh there's like God. hundreds of these all around the island. Uh, even so, this is basically, this is taken from the Dudufaki's vineyards. He even has this ancient foot uh, grape press in his vineyard. And we, oh, wow. we're all standing there so you can see it for size. And uh, think, look at this real quick. This is the ancient Minoan ingenuity. This is from thousands of years ago. They have actually, over here, you can see it's almost like a, a canal. So as you stomp the grapes, there'd be a little path that would lead, that lead the wines down so they could take it to the vineyard and put it into tanks or into, oh. into barrels or into their amphora. Their clay That's pot. amazing. Yeah. So a lot of different grapes from Crete. Uh, whites are focused on Vidiano and Malvasia. They also make the Muscat of Spino, so this great. And then reds, they make Liatico is what we have in the glass right now. Cotafali and Mandilari are two other indigenous red grapes on Crete. I have some pictures of the varietals here. This is Liatico. So you can see they're really plump, big grapes, thick skin, uh, really unique uh, varietal. Um, Cotafali here, big clusters. You can see this as fine. I love to see that there's a little snail just growing on the, on the grape. Oh, wow. uh, so this is the main Dubufaki. So, 
Crete is such a beautiful patchwork of vineyards, farms, wines, uh, olive trees, fig trees, just so much grows here, it's such a fertile place. Uh, and here is Nikos Dulufaki. So he's the third generation owner of this winery. He took over the vineyard from his father. Uh, and he really dedicates himself mainly to Vidiano for white and Liatico for red. So these are the two varietals that are most important for Crete because of their just how they, I'll start that over. Greece as a country is, has over 300 indigenous varietals. But then you go to the island of Crete and there are about like 50, 60, 70 grapes only from Crete. So this island is so unique, has a rich history, a rich culture of uh, this biodiversity is, is tremendous. Uh, and, but for the longest time, Crete was really focused on like bulk wine production. They were trying to make as much wine as they can as cheaply as possible. Uh, and they weren't really focusing on the indigenous grapes of Crete. Liatico though, and Nikos Dulufakis wanted to focus on telling that story, telling the story of what makes Crete so special. So he replanted a lot of his vineyards to grapes like the Liatico. So uh, we're tasting basically uh, a new planting of an ancient varietal that's indigenous to Crete. Um, I love showing this. They, they also age their wines in clay amphora. Uh, not this particular wine, but some of their wines, they age in clay amphora using clay pots that were actually built with clay from the vineyards themselves. That they Wait, have still, still to this day? Yep, still to this day. They dig, they dig clay oh, from wow. their own vineyards and they make amphoras out of them. Um, a quick little video here to see if that works. No, let's skip that. Uh, so this is a line of the wines they choose. So they make two amphora wines. So they have a wine that we're drinking today that's Asian amphora, uh, but we're tasting the one in the center, the Liatico. So this is uh, the founder of Diamond Imports, Ted Diamantes, with with Mr. Dulafaki Senior. Uh, he passed away a few years ago, and Nikos is now taking over the winery. So I have some other, these are beautiful shots. I love showing this. This is the picture of the vineyard in the spring. You can see they don't use any fertilizer. So they, what they do is they have these cover crops. This is a, another way to do these, how they farm, they farm organically. Uh, having these cover crops in the summer, they, they, they till the soil. So all those nutrients from the cover crop is now back into the dirt. And that's how they get a lot of organic, you know, how they fertilize the soil naturally without using uh, chemicals. Oh, wow. Right, so a bunch of pictures here. Let's see, yeah. Let's get that. Sorry, extra slides there. So um, here we have the Dulufaki Filiatico. Uh, so the Hunter Vista Filiatico, it spends about nine months in new oak barrels, uh, certified organic. I like to call this a high value item because you know for the dollar cost of this bottle, you're getting tremendous wine. Uh, also high altitude. What I love about Crete is that you're on, not only are you on a mountainous region, but you're on an island. So you have both that maritime influence as well as that high altitude influence that makes the wine so unique and special. Oh, interesting. Uh, to me, these wines remind me, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. To me, to me, to me these, these wines remind me of wines from like Southern Italy. They have this like rustic earthiness to it, which I really love. Yeah. They're kind of, but they're still, they're tannic but bold, but like not too, not too intense. They have like, they're really well balanced. Um, it's not like your Napa Cabernet in terms of the oak. The oak is more subtle. It's well integrated. Um, so it's a wine, a red wine you could pair with like fish, chicken, but you could also have this with some lamb or steak. This would be a good wine for uh, Easter coming up in a couple of weeks. Absolutely. This is a great wine. So Lane asked, where's the vineyard located in Crete? This is in Daphnis, uh, right in the center of Crete. So right that smack in the middle of the island. That's interesting. You, you always hear about Chania or Heraklion. You don't hear yeah. much about the center. Exactly. So if you were, we flew into uh, Heraklion and we drove about an hour uh, to, the, to the vineyard site just for this wine. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Crete's a really interesting place, up and coming for sure. Uh, the varietals from Crete, they're maybe not the most uh, they're not as popular as some of the other wines like Ayuritico or um, you know, Malbro or things like that, but they're really, they're, they're, they're showing really well. They age very well. Um, and I love them because they, they show, they tell the story of Crete. You know, they, they're wines that, and they're Cretan. Like Crete is such a unique place. It's such a beautiful island. There's so much culture and history there. And I feel like these wines 
I, I love that the winemakers took that effort to then to replant and show to grow these uh, ancient varietals that are indigenous to their island. That helps them tell that story. And if you ever go to Crete, you know, they speak a different dialect. They have different music. They call, you know, they, they have different cheeses that grow there. They don't grow anywhere else in Greece. I don't know what the sheep uh, eat there, but their, their cheese and their milk is so good. Um, so it's, just, it's such an island full of life. And the wines really have those kind of characteristics. You could feel like the life in the wines as you taste them. So for me, they're really fun. I love enjoying them. Um, and again, they're, 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 they're very affordable. Like they're value-driven wines for sure. Uh, definitely crowd pleasing wine. So, you know, you could get a case of this wine for Easter with the family and, you know, it's not going to break the bank. And I think everyone would enjoy it, whether they like lighter reds or fuller reds. There's something in this, there's some qualities in this wine. I think everyone would love. Absolutely. So now are we, uh, are we kind of towards the end of uh, the, the tasting? Yeah, so we had we tasted our three wines. We'd love to open it up for some questions now, uh, or we could let people talk amongst themselves. What do you think, Adi? How do you think would be the best way to do it? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of ask um, um, Eleni and uh, Evelyn. Would you like us to open up uh, where people could speak, or would you like uh, for us to take some questions? If I, you know what, if you want to open up and people can speak. Um, absolutely ask so questions at the end maybe all right so let's uh let's allow let's allow anybody who wants to unmute and 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 kind of chat away um to do that but just keep in mind there's there's uh 50 plus people in here so if you're not speaking keep it muted um if you want to say something by all means unmute yourself join the party um, after three different bottles of wine, it should be a party right about now. So, so we're ready to go. Uh, so yeah, feel free. Uh, we, we have cameras on and, and unmute yourself. Let's have a conversation and Johnny's here to answer and anything we could answer, we will answer. Johnny, can you put the names of your restaurants in the chat so we can go visit them when we go to New York? Sure, yeah, definitely. His uh, restaurants so are awesome, by the way. In New York City. Uh, we have Ustia, uh, Molivo. I'm actually I'm gonna type the website. So UstiaNYC.com, uh, Molivos. We got we beat. I think we is it Molivos restaurant. I gotta double check because there's a there's a village called Molivos. I think we beat the village in terms of making a website. Yes, we did. <laughs> yeah, we got we got we got the website over the village. Uh, Oceana. Oceana just got remodeled right when everything got shut down. So we remodeled the restaurant. So it's beautiful, it's thick and span. So these are the three restaurants we have in New York City. Uh, then we have two restaurants in Westchester, which are in the suburbs of New York, uh, the Modern Barn, and then uh, City Limits Diner. So only five, Johnny? Come on, you're slacking. Can I actually, I, I, did I unmute myself? Yeah. Um, Molivas, we've been there many, many times, Johnny, and it's so nice to meet you and know that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's so good, everyone. You have to go when you're in New York. If that's yes, please the only come. place you go for dinner, that's where you need to go. It's so good. And we're looking forward to, uh, we're open now at Molivas, but we're also going to be, we're, we're going to introduce some of our food to goldbelly.com. So you could be shipping oh. a lot of our, <laughs> lot of our yeah, some of our specialties, <laughs> we could ship all over the country. So we're working on that now. So stay tuned. I'll, I'll make an announcement later when that happens. But we're trying to figure out what foods will transport well, like in the mail with the ice packs. <laughs> Probably some of our like signature dish dips and, you know, things like moussaka and a tray. Like you could, so you could bake it at home, frozen or something like that. We're going to figure it out. But we're really excited to have that option to, to deliver molivos across the country. You have um, to do you have to do that because we are big gold belly people. So oh, <laughs> we'll cool. definitely be buying your we'll be on gold I just I just tried gold belly for the first time recently. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. You know, I was in, I was like skeptical at first. Like how could this come good over but it's you know, exactly. they do a good job packaging it and the food actually was great. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Kathy asked how, how can we order the wine? So yeah, both put the in the chat box, Greekwinesdelivered.com, a great place. They have so many different things. Uh, from, from Greece. Also, they have free shipping, which I think is huge. Uh, so definitely take advantage of that. Um, and you know, uh, Johnny, just, I just want to mention, if you pay a little extra, 
Foti will deliver it on a donkey, a classic Greek donkey. So yeah. <laughs> just a little bit extra fee for that. So uh, Foti had said to Chrissy and me when we were making these arrangements that if people were to order any of these wines tonight, that he would give 10% back to Philotokos. So Absolutely, um, really, if yes. you want to order, order tonight. <laughs> Uh, I don't, you know, Fudgy's not on online right now, so I, you know, I don't know how far that extends, but, um, and we won't hold them to it, but. No, no, uh, I, I'll speak on behalf of Fudgy, uh, and yes, 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 absolutely, and that, this is nationwide, uh, somebody said all the way to Chicago, yes, free shipping. All the way to Seattle, Washington, and Eric, uh, you and Lori should show us uh, your, your picture, because we're curious to see, you're such Hellenophiles, um, mm -hmm. uh, the fellow Eric uh, emailed me and he said that um, his wife was making, um, uh, on American Easter, he was, she was making baklava and smarikopita and lamb. And so, you know, we made a new friend all the way from <laughs> Seattle, Washington. Excellent, excellent. Hey, Bonjour, Rob. How are you doing? I bet you it's disgusting. Hello. Hi. So nice to meet you. Does she know she's on? Hi, I'm on. It's, um, you, we have enjoyed this so much. We're all here. Can we all say hi? We're on right now. This is. Hi. 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 These are our dear friends, um, and Evelyn, congratulations. And Elaine, what a beautiful event this was. But I want to share a little bit of our menu that really complemented your delicious wines. We had scordalia, we had some flatbread pizza, we had gigantes, beets with feta, which really was very nice with the rosé. We were commenting a little cortopita, and of course, um, Koryatiki salata. So wow. everything that, it all went so well with the wines. Thank you so much. And now I'm hungry. Come on over. There's <laughs> plenty. A lot of <laughs> Amazing. That's, that's awesome. That, thank you guys for, for sharing that. And thank you guys for, for, for getting together and enjoying the wines. Because that's, that's really what it's about. You know, Johnny, back me up. Greek wine. Food. All about, exactly. It's all Family about Greek and friends. Wine, Greek food. And, you know, Greek wine is, they, they, Greece has been producing wine for thousands of years, but the industry has really taken off in the past 30 years. Um, and it's about people like us who are sharing our culture with other people, so, you know, our friends and ordering Greek wines when you're out to eat. And it goes a long way for an industry like this, where it relies on people to really experiment and try new things and, and share the love. Um, you know, my, my, my other side of the family is Italian and it always amazes me, like how, how did Italian wines become like so, you, so, uh, so well, widespread and like so popular, the Greek wines to me are just as good or even better. Oh, yeah. And it's all about people sharing it and, and teaching people and making, making people understand it and, and just putting, put it, try, trying it, you know, experiment and try new things. There's so many different wines to choose from. And they, you know, I think you guys have uh, over a hundred different Greek wines on your website. So you can never, you know, you can always try something new, find what you like, and then you stick with that. But there's so much diversity, there's so much to offer. So, uh, and they go well with all all your Greek food. <laughs> <laughs> and so you know, just, also, uh, you know, if if anybody ever needs any advice, any pairings, any anything like that, you know, send us a message, send us an email. You can um, also email me. I'll put my email in the box. Yeah, reach out because. Uh, you know, we're all about the promotion of Greek wine. We we feel it's it's an amazing thing. We feel it's 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 something that has to come more into the mainstream. And you know, Greeks are the first place to start. And hopefully, you know, everybody feels the way we do because, I you know, I love Greek wine obviously, um, and I've been learning so much about it, especially with Johnny joining us and 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 explaining all these cool little facts history it, it's just it, it, you have to let greek wine in and you will not regret it, it, it it's an amazing amazing thing that we do as greeks i i've got a question about the about just eastern european wine in general it seems well it's not that it seems it's just a lot more savory to me than the you know new world 
fruity, big fruity mm. Cabernets yeah. that you get everywhere. And I enjoy the savoriness of wines, whether it's Hungary, Croatia, Greek, whatever it is, I really enjoy that savoriness. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering why these grapes that are so good aren't planted in, in other regions of the world and, you know, yeah. specifically the new world, you know, That's why, why haven't they spread like other, like French, French grapes or German grapes or Italian grapes or even Spanish grapes? Yeah, it's a good question. And honestly, it's a hard one to answer. Um, you know, because wine started off actually in like, in like the Mesopotamia, ancient Egypt area. And then from there, it spread throughout the rest of the world um, to Eastern Europe, from Greece. You know, a lot of people believe Greece is a gateway of wine making to the rest of Europe. Um, so wines evolve, they change. And over, over history, you know, the different gr grapes can become different things. They've evolved and, and changed. So it's possible that some of the varietals you you drink wine from other countries could be, you know, an evolution of or, or a mutation of, a, of wines that came from Greece. But um, it's so hard to say. I mean, France, they took winemaking the most serious from an early time, I think, in terms of like the, the, in the, with, the, with their classification systems dating back to the medieval ages. So their wines became synonymous with top quality. And that's something that they built over literally centuries. Uh, and have created, um, you know, an empire from that. Greek wines, you know, we were making wines for even longer, but we weren't making them with that level of, like, luxury, if, I, if that makes sense, or that level of, we just made simple wines that we love to go with our food. Um, but so now our wines are getting more serious, and, they're, and they compete with wines from other countries. So, um, and then in the, in the West, in the New World, all of our wines taste pretty, you know, we tend to make wines in a more fruitier style. That's just like the New World style, like from America and Australia. Um, but it's hard to say why our wines are more savory, like you said. Um, you know, I think it's just in the Old World, our wines tend to be more, they, they tend to be less fruit forward. They tend, to, they tend to have more qualities driven from the terroir, whether it's like that rich land. It could be also those older vines that go that factor into that. Um, it goes in also the type of soil content, like in Santorini, for example, those wines almost taste salty and they've grown on this volcanic ter terroir. So there's so many different factors that go into it, um, but it's hard to say exactly why. I think a lot of it has to do with just marketing. Um, I, yeah, you know, I, I, Johnny, Chardonnay, like now people know to say Cabernet and Chardonnay now, and it's hard to say, you know, you, it's gonna be hard to get a Spanish guy in Spain, planting Mosco Filero, <laughs> or uh, or you know, I don't, I've heard in Australia they they have some Asiatico they're growing in Zeno Mavro in certain parts of Australia, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, but you know, I, I think a lot of it comes down to marketing, and that's the same reason why Greeks in the past they were ripping up their plants of Asiatico and Zeno Mavro and Ayuridico, and they were planting Cabernet and Sauvignon Blanc because that's what they thought people wanted to drink. But now I think the world has changed where people aren't just looking for the same grapes. They're trying to, they're looking to try things from different countries. And each country has native varietals that grew, grow there. Like in Italy, you know, there's hundreds of Italian grapes that are from Italy. Uh, the grapes that are native to a particular country are gonna tend to taste better in that environment than a foreign grape. It's just, they, they work well with that soil. They've evolved to that kind of environment. They tend to taste better. Um, so, it's hard to say why, but I just think, you know, grapes from their indigenous place will, will tell a story. Uh, they, they, you could travel through wine, you know. It's, it's, you, could always, you know, Greeks make great, great Sauvignon Blanc and great Chardonnay, but, you know, something about having the indigenous varietals of that country, it's going to make you feel more connected to it, and, and the wines will taste better. Hope I answered your question. That was a, 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 <laughs> wind, a long-winded answer. Uh, uh, anybody else out there you want to uh, uh, chime in, uh, ask any question live on, on, on the mic? Uh, uh, in the meantime, cut me off whenever you want. But Hello. I'll... Yeah, we... Hi. Oh, boy. Go ahead. Yes. Hi. I'm from Andover, Philoptokos. We just want to say hello. We have a nice group here tonight, and we're enjoying the wine and all hello, the hello. good knowledge. So hello, everybody. Hello, Pasca. I'm Kathy Kupos. Hi. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> 
Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. And Dorothy loved the fuss. Thank you. Nice to see you all. Thank you so much. And we've got Springfield so loved the fuss on the call as well. We couldn't get the video started, but this was a really, really awesome um, webinar. We wanted to say thank you, but also it was an unexpected surprise because this is this is Mary Beth from Springfield, Joan's daughter. So hi, Aunt Marietta. Hi, Aunt Nancy. <laughs> Hi, so good to see you guys. I'll tell, I'll give mom all your love when I see her. Excellent. So, and we're very honored because we have Father Chris and Presbyteria and Father Yanni and Presbyteria on the phone. And we even saw baby Elena, Eleni. Um, so can you say a few words to us? We, we miss you. We haven't, you know, I haven't been in church very much, so. I miss you all. Well, I, it I think that um, this was a great opportunity for us to gather remotely. And uh, the wines were exceptional. And, um, and just seeing everybody is a wonderful thing. And being, for us, you know, being a little dressed down and not in a collar and relaxing and having a little wine was <laughs> a beautiful evening. And I hope it's very successful. A lot of fun. Thank you all so much. Good time. That is great. That that is so great. Thank what, you. The man behind the Thank you. Thank you. Uh, greetings from Philadelphia, and I want to thank my cousin Evelyn for sending us the flyer that Elaine uh, composed. Hi, Elaine. Thank, thank you so much for including us and uh, bringing us all together tonight. Isigian, uh, although I heard somebody once say who wasn't Greek, skinny asses. <laughs> so oh, opa. Cheers opa. from Philadelphia and from the St. Luke Grumal chapter I'm representing. Oxia girls, congratulations. Way to go. Let's do it again. Yeah. She is, she is from the May Cross family. Thank you so very much. Excellent. Yasas, yamas. Well, thank you, thank you. And, you know, when we were talking about this, a friend of mine from another parish had given me this idea. And, you know, we talked about it with Evelyn and the, and the executive board. And I said, you know, isn't there a parishioner that um, has a liquor store that does things like this? And God bless Chrissy Voto, but she said, oh, <laughs> and we made the connection with Forti, and he's just the most awesome guy, uh, even though we haven't met in person, but he, um, you know, he's got a fantastic website. He's, I, and I knew right away, because I did a little research before I called him, and I said, this guy's got it all together. And so, um, you know, we really appreciate everything Forti and uh, Ari and Johnny have done, and this has been a great, fun evening, and I thank you. And I see a lot of smiles and laughing, so I know people have been drinking their wine. <laughs> they're having a good time. Elaine, <laughs> uh, 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 on that hey, note. Uh, 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 oh, hi. We just, yeah, this group wanted to say hi, and I wanted to thank my new Na, who's Elaine, <laughs> for putting this together. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for chiming in. Uh, I was going to say, um, you know, it, it, it's amazing to get everybody together and we appreciate the opportunity. Um, and we love, you know, I'm stuck at home just like everybody else. And I, we love the opportunity to just see faces. And, you know, I'm going to tell you one thing. Uh, Foti and I have the easiest job in the world because we get to um, have a social event with wine. I mean, we could be the most boring people putting everybody to sleep, but they're drinking wine. So they're going to have the great time and they're going to say, oh my God, thank you guys. So like our job is so easy. Like it, it doesn't even matter what we do, what we say, you drink wine, you have a good time, you see friendly faces and it's great. And that's what we love. We love to see people having a good time. We love to bring people together, especially in times like this. And we appreciate the opportunity. We appreciate the St. Vasilios Philoptokos for inviting us. And we appreciate everybody who supported this event, everybody who chimed in, everybody who uh, 
uh, logged on, you know, it's amazing and it's great. And you guys, you guys are a great group of people and we, we thank you so much. I will say one more time, thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Chrissy. Thank you, Ari, Forti, and Johnny. This has been absolutely awesome and God willing, we can repeat this again next year. And absolutely. Be in person and maybe we can Zoom for the people who can't be there in Definitely. person. But yeah. thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart and all of our hearts. It is my pleasure. Johnny, you brought the knowledge as <laughs> always, my friend. And you know what? A handsome guy. That's what I'm going to say right now. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we have a lot of nice Greek girls at St. Facilios. <laughs> uh, my brother, my brother is single. I'm, I'm, a, I'm taken though. All I'm right. Taken. Well, we, I'm sure he's as nice looking as you are. <laughs> he is. He's, yo he's younger, handsome. He's more athletic than me. So. <laughs> uh, it, th this was an amazing event. Johnny, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us as always. Thank you so much for giving us all this amazing information and teaching us about Greek wine. We appreciate it so much. And, you know, you know, we love you, buddy. We love you. Too. <laughs> and everybody out there, Elaine, Evelyn, um, the whole Philoptochos, everybody joining us. Once again, we appreciate the opportunity. We hope you guys had a good time. Um, it was amazing for us. Uh, I'm sorry, like, Foti is not here at the moment. Uh, he has his own uh, uh, issues that he's going through. But uh, we, we appreciate it so much. And, and thank you so much for a great event. And we appreciate everybody who joined. And we hope you enjoyed the wine. We hope you enjoyed the information. And we hope to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Hey, Evelyn, what's that wine behind you? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Evelyn, Evelyn, I think he's talking that's, about your Tabasco. That's actually, Tabasco sauce. <laughs> and I met my mom's, and it's really a, an adorable poster. And I'm going to ask my mom if I can have it. <laughs> <laughs> if you add it to your wine, it'll give you a zing, I'm sure. <laughs> sure will. <laughs> my dad always Good. loved Tabasco, so hence the Tabasco poster. Good to see everybody. Aww. Thank you. God Thank bless you everyone. everyone. Bye bye. Thank you again. Bye. 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 Thank you. All right. Uh, we are going to sign off right now. And a big thank you to the Save Vasilios Philoptochos. Thank you so much. And we will see you next time. Have a great night. Finish that wine. And you're, gonna, you're definitely going to have a good night if you do. Yeah. So. Bye. Bye. bye bye everyone see you all in the morning see you all yeah. in the morning or thoughts at eight yes <laughs> <laughs> bye bye